Welcome back to another Gimbal Weekly Update. I'm going to jump right back into the disclaimers. Content provided the event is for general information only and not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. Any performance his reference is historical, no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged, may not be invested into directly. Any economic forecast set forth during the event may not develop as predicted, and there can be no guarantee that any strategy will be successful. These thoughts and opinions of those of Gimbal Financial and do not represent the views of LPL Financial. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advice offered through Gimbal Financial, registered investment advisor, separate entity from LPL Financial. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> it gets easier and easier every time. My nerves settle. I can continue to read, which is always a good, a good sign. <laughs> what do you got on your hat there, Doug? <laughs> Oh, this would be a, a flat build hat, Keith, and uh, I still have the, the sticker on it um, because that's, that's, what all the, that's what all the cool <laughs> kids do. I, I kind of feel like a doofus wearing these, but uh, but my kids look really cool in them. <laughs> what, what, what kind of people wear their hats like I'm wearing mine? Um, Amanda, you want to take this one? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'd like to keep my job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, so you just can't win in a hat unless you're 12. I will admit, I will also wear a ball cap just like you, Keith. Okay. Hey, feel free to email us your favorite picture of you or your spouse or your uh, significant other in a hat. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Right on. Well, it's Friday. What are we talking about today? Today is a great day to start off with the market. I can't remember if last week we talked about how well we did on our audit. We got thumbs up that we've been treat others as we'd want to be treated and appreciate uh, Debbie, you spearheading that thing for us. Debbie, smile, because you said you'd give us a good smile. <laughs> oh yeah, there's my good smile. <laughs> we got another year under our belts. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's a great week. We've uh, um, seen progress uh, behind Doug. You can see the, 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 the Gimbal World Headquarters is making progress. Uh, the markets have been productive this week. It's uh, wow. nice. <laughs> uh, and the markets this week, I guess if I was going to give you an update on the markets, uh, the, they've been unique and that they're trending upward but uh if you depending on the stocks you own uh they may or may not have been as nice for you somebody called me shortly before this they own a, a cyber security stock that they work for and it's down i think 10 percent today or something like that and that's a uh that's a rough day at the office for that particular one uh let me share my screen with you here real quick We've been, and I'll go through this real quickly, but we've been talking about the NASDAQ, which is traditionally more aggressive. But if, you know, if you've had money riding on this, it's been a good ride. Where That's where we put assets. I, I'd like to think we would have put all the money there, but it, because it's more aggressive, we had to diversify. Um, this right here was last Friday. And so we've worked our way up from a week ago and we crossed over, I remember, a few weeks ago, we were talking about getting over the 10,000 level. We made it over the 11,000. What do you think about that, Doug? Well, I think it's just been an unbelievable week in the stock market. And one of the things, um, Keith, if you could point your arrow down to where it closed on the 21-day moving average. Yeah, right there. I, I found that to be a, a very interesting time when the market's pulled back a lot of times. Uh, it, it could go it could go one way or the other but but when you've had such good growth and it comes back to a moving average it might just take a pause it might take a rest there this one rested almost a whole day and then it <laughs> decided to shoot back up and so as we go forward i i think these next couple months we could get into a bit of a pause and we might move back down to one of these moving averages so I'm, I'm in a work zone here i hope you guys can hear me <laughs> i'm having fun but but yeah I, I think the markets could be in for a little bit of a pause maybe a retreat back to one of these lines the green the the uh, red hopefully not the black 
Yeah, and that's the beauty of, uh, of what we do, because I, I could see some aspects of the market actually moving forward while this one may take a breather here. And uh, I, I, I was thinking, we have a uh, friend that we were at a meeting with, uh, I can't even remember, it had to be a decade ago, and, and there were four or so of us around the conference room table, and I remember him asking one of us, uh, what are you afraid of? And um, <laughs> that's such a horrible question because it makes you get real that was me. That he asked me. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't point fingers. <laughs> and hey, Ken, if you're on the call, I love you, man. Uh, you're, it takes a real friend to say that. So thank you. You're a real friend. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, uh, I mean, investing in the market, it, there's a lot of reasons to be afraid and, and like, over here, you could say it's too low. I don't want to invest. And over here, you could say it's too high. And so there's a good uh, fear is a, is, is a big deal. And, and, and there, um, a lot of times when the markets do really well, it's, there's a saying out there that it climbs a wall of worry. And so anxiety is out there. We mentioned that last week by what was happening in the precious metals markets. And then uh, let me flip over here to a S&P 500 to give you a feel for what's going on there. Uh, it's taking a little bit to recharge here. And so it didn't, it really hasn't run up at the angle that the uh, NASDAQ did. We're right at, um, right before the market dropped, we were at 33.90 and we're at the 33.50. So we're almost back to where we were on the broader market of companies, the names that you're familiar with in your neighborhood, like Procter and Gamble and, and uh, Merck or Lilly or somebody like that. Those are the sorts of companies that are in there versus some of the more high tech names that might be in Silicon Valley and the NASDAQ. One thing I noticed recently, Keith, is just the amount of technology stocks that are still in the S&P 500. And I saw a report where it compared back to 1990 in 1990, 6% of the S&P 500 was in technology stocks. And it was really a more diversified group of stocks at that point in time. And then a thing happened in 1999 where tech exploded and it actually hit its highest percentage where technology represented 29% of S&P 500 stocks. So we're, we're not far off from those levels, um, but yet there's still a lot of other stocks out there in different sectors energy, oil, that uh, have been dragging the performance down. I was watching uh, a video to kind of get some better training on some stuff uh, a few weeks ago, and, and I used a word on this show uh, about that same time, and one of the guys said, that anybody that uses the word bifurcated is a jerk, <laughs> and, and, and I had just used it, but that's bifurcated means split, and uh, the uh, market is definitely showing some favoritism towards the companies that are gaining traction during this COVID time. And so you, you're seeing companies and uh, industries that are doing extraordinarily well, like the technology and the healthcare, and you're seeing some doing extraordinarily horrible, like say maybe the airline companies. Um, let me show you a couple places that are, are really intriguing to me why I'm not as anxious uh, uh, as maybe, well, I think, Doug, you, you see, seem like your ang anxiousness towards this might be more towards the NASDAQ, but this is just a, a symptom of some other places in the market. My, my charts are moving really slowly here. Uh, another place in the market where they haven't had a big run up. Uh, this is foreign stocks. This is the first trust developed markets uh, fund in, it, you can see this kind of did more of an L shape rather than the V that the other ones did. And it's, it's starting to get some attention over here. So that's really intriguing to me. This isn't a recommendation to buy. It's just saying that some money is flowing other places now as a, compared to just into the NASDAQ. And then I saw, uh, I noticed that even some of the uh, more extreme international uh, countries are uh, Uh, getting some of that money. Maybe this will cooperate, maybe it won't here. It's, uh, uh, but the uh, emerging the emerging markets, which would be you know some of your India or Brazil or some of those sorts of countries, 
are uh, starting to see similar activity where the money is starting to flow back into those markets as well. So I don't know, um, you know, we've, we've seen where China's economy is picking back up, Chinese stocks have been going crazy. And so uh, you can kind of see the same thing here. This thing is finally starting to turn around, but it's still not anywhere near where it was before the drop off in the uh, late winter. One of my favorite research partners is this group called Bespoke, and they put out a weekly report on how markets are doing all over the world. And <laughs> there's a lot of pro productivity happening behind me here. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, Keith and I, we always expect some little country somewhere across the Atlantic or Pacific to just be exploding and and, the, and it's interesting, the sleeve that has done the best is not even the technology stocks. It's one that Keith and I were talking about this morning. There it is. Keith's got it on cue right now. Uh, he's going to pull up silver. And silver has just been a dynamic performer this year. Look at that. Up wow. over 30% year to date. And so uh, I'm sorry we didn't put all your money in silver, everybody. <laughs> but uh, but, uh, but it, it really is... It's it's an interesting time because you have commodities moving, you have tech stocks moving, and then you have some other stocks. Keith, if you if you can type in uh, USO real quick, this the oil market, and it's it's done the opposite of this, and and it's it's just it looks like something that you might like to ski down. Uh, <laughs> and so there's what I'm trying to say here is is we're listening to the market. We don't know what, what's going to happen these next few months, just like you don't. There's a lot of headwinds that are potential out there. Yeah, here's oil. Look at that. <laughs> it hasn't recovered at all. But by listening to the market, our hope is to be able to uh, smooth out the ride for you and uh, use cash when we, when we need a place to hide. I'll turn off and uh, go to mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think I think we're still very optimistic as we uh, take uh, heed with managing your resources. We see good things out there. Uh, I think we're probably a little more cautious with the technology stocks that they have had a, quite a run up. And so, um, you know, concern of that run up might be the reason we wouldn't necessarily plow more money into those right now. But we think there's good opportunities out there and, and, and we're very uh, encouraged by what we see. The, uh, one of the things we know is that wall of worry is out there. And, and this week I, I've been asking some clients a couple questions and just to kind of see where everybody is, because um, I, think, I think listening to one another is the best way to be uh, um, aware of what's going on, not only our friends, our families and our peers. And so just getting a better feel for what they're thinking now helps you be a better friend, family member. And, and so the first question I've been asking people is that if zero is I am not afraid of the COVID virus and 10 is I've all of a sudden found myself in the wrong lane and a head-on collision is just moments away, 10 being the most anxious that I could possibly be, where do I find myself on that, that grid? And, and, and so I've talked to people that have been in different places on that zero to 10. And then the next question is, what's it gonna take, say you're at a four on there, What's it going to take going forward for you to work your way back closer to zero? What, what event is going to change that? And, and so that's, that, that's really critical, I think, for each of us to get back to some form of normalcy, whatever that looks like, is just to answer some of our, those questions. And if to nobody else, to myself, just to know what am I afraid of and how am I going to handle that in the days and weeks and months ahead? Because we realize that some of our friends who maybe those, that number is closer to nine or 10, um, that's gonna be many, many, probably months before their, their, their comfort level gets back down to zero, which that then will filter back into our economy in, in different ways. And so, so as we help one another, as we work through our own anxieties, it's also gonna affect even economic things that are going on out there. And that goes with the, uh we've talked about this a lot, just communication and stuff. And so we want to know as we are meeting with you, as we are making appointments with you, where do you guys fit on that scale? So 
we want to be respectful of your wishes and what your comfort level is. So um, let us know. That'd be yeah, awesome. And, you know, as, as you're getting out and about, make this your destination. <laughs> you know, put on the rubber gloves and fill up the gas tank and drive over here to Gimbal and just walk around and check it out. There's there's places to still go, even if you don't want to drive to Gatlinburg this year or, or go up to Wisconsin or Michigan. Um, there's, there's still some good places to get out and go. And speaking of comfort levels, I know I live with my sister and she got tested for COVID on Tuesday. And so, you know, there was a little bit of apprehension about who we were going to see in our house and everything. But um, I can see behind you, Doug, that Gimbal's transformation has been huge since I was there last week. Yeah, <laughs> it's, no been, more it's, it's been really huge. It's been really cool. Uh, they, ripped out the, they ripped out the front porch here. Just, what'd that take? Maybe a couple hours? And, uh, <laughs> that looks awesome. We can't hear you, Doug. <laughs> hey, can you guys say hi? <laughs> the guys are in here working away. They put a new a new roof on. It's it's just, it's looking unbelievable. And it, it won't be long and uh, we'll be conducting business in here. Right now, the garage has been working great. But uh, the, the new place is just going to be fantastic. And we're excited for this to be home for all of you. I'd like yeah, to so put in a disclaimer, too. My sister did test negative, so I'll be back in there on Monday. But <laughs> the, just wanted to share that, too, for all the concerned people, potentially. Well, That's awesome. and, you know, these, these guys uh, working over here, they're just, they bring a lot of joy to me. They're, they're in here working away. They got Alan Jackson playing on the radio. You and me go fishing in the dark, and they're just having a lot of fun. You can tell, and uh, and I think that's key. I, I think you got to have some fun in life, and and I thought uh, that was the nitty gritty dirt band. <laughs> no, <laughs> man, well maybe it is. Maybe it is. I'm is just calling you out, man. <laughs> okay, well, hey, you know better than me. <laughs> Sorry, uh, you your train of thought. <laughs> no, yeah. well, maybe, maybe I was stuck on Alan Jackson earlier. They they were playing uh, something I thought was Alan Jackson. <laughs> and man, I need to brush on my brush up on my country music. <laughs> well, we uh, one of the things that I know some people might be afraid of or concerned about. Uh, there's just a lot of strange things going on in the economy right now. For me, uh, I, I was shocked several weeks ago when I saw something that said there was a coin shortage. And um, my wife was harassing me because I don't like carrying change. So I have like a change jar at home where I throw all my change in and it's just probably weighs 20 pounds. And, and I might be the cause of the change shortage. But then there, there's stuff that goes on out there where some businesses aren't even using cash right now. And so um, I know that creates different anxieties for people. And so the idea that we might be moving to a cashless society is concerning to a number of people. And I thought we might talk a little bit, bit about that. I, I went to the great, the Ivy League of Kentucky, Murray State University back in the late seventies and wrote a paper for a computer class back then when they used punch cards called a, uh, uh, EFT, Electronic Funds Transfer, colon, the Cashless Society. And it was only about two or three pages back then. And all the people, all my friends in the dorm just started trash talking about how silly and how stupid I was that, that we would ever be cashless. And yet, uh, that's pretty much where our culture has evolved. Doug, do you, know who's, on a, do you know who's on a $5 bill? Ah. Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got it, man. Yeah. What do I go. win? Do, do I win some free hand sanitizer? Exactly. That's a shameless, that gimbal that's sanitizer. A, that's a shameless plug, folks. Come on over and get your free hand sanitizer. That's awesome. We got a lot of those old tubes. <laughs> what do you What do you think of what do you, Debbie, Amanda? What do you guys think about a cashless society? You guys use cash a lot? No, I don't use cash that much at all. What are you saying? Debbie Cash doesn't use cash? I know. Isn't that awful? 
<laughs> Somebody I calls you to... the funny cash. I forget yeah. who that is. <laughs> I mean, honestly, the last time I went to withdraw cash was, I don't even remember. Um, but I know we've talked about this concept of, um, I think Keith, you mentioned yesterday, you kind of took a poll of like, who has a Venmo account, who has on PayPal, who is all of these we are using cash in a virtual way anyways. And um, I don't know if it's just my age, but like I said, I am, I don't use cash. <laughs> if you ask me who's on $5 bill, I would have no idea. <laughs> so, um, but that just, I, I've also witnessed the same thing at the grocery stores. Um, it's never been a true concern to me if just, if we put that into perspective of, um, like all of us said, when was the last time we, we use cash or how often do we use it anyways? So, you know, I, I tend I to carry like a money clip and uh, I don't know if you can tell, but that, that money that's in there is like all been up and turned in it. It's <laughs> been in there for several weeks. That's, that's me. That's, that's how much cash I've used lately. Yeah. I think it's always good to have a little cash around, um, you know, for an emergency, we like to have, you know, cash if we need some gas and we didn't bring our wallet or if you like if you're a tipper uh cash is is always nice to receive but uh, it's amazing you know i started using venmo uh probably a couple years ago i had this friend his name's chad and uh, i told him i said yeah i owed him like 20 bucks or something he goes um well, why don't you just venmo it to me i was like what do you want me to do <laughs> <laughs> I said, just pull over to an ATM. I'll get you some cash. He's like, are you serious? You really use ATMs? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. But since we've started this conversation, I wonder what it was like um, when checkbooks came out and you started writing checks for things. Um, it, it may be the same thing. I don't know. But um, yeah, credit cards, debit cards. I know Dave Ramsey's a big fan of the debit card. Um, it'd be interesting what what some of you think about, you know, cash and uh, the coin shortage and, and, and what this looks like in the, for the rest of 2020, because if we're not traveling much, if we're not getting out there, if we're not going out to eat, um, handling a $20 bill from somebody else, I don't know, uh, maybe you still have your rubber gloves on from pa pumping gas, so maybe it's okay, I don't know. Yeah, there's that old uh, phrase, filthy lucre, and, <laughs> and so, that, that's the disgustingness of money changing hands. But uh, yeah, I wonder what the, the farmers thought when we went from a uh, barter system to actually having cash, right? Like, like, what is this piece of paper? <laughs> like, I just gave you some corn and I've got a piece of paper, <laughs> right? And so uh, there's always been anxieties about the exchange of goods and services and how that's done. And, and part of that, I think, today is why silver prices are up, right? That they think yeah. that there's a good amount of people that think that's a more stable um, variable of, of measuring your wealth or, or your transferable money than maybe cash today. I don't know. I can tell you one example of the cashless society that I am all for. And, and, and this is a guy who liked to stop and talk to the toll booth people. I mean, I, I really did. I'd ask, how is your day going? Uh, what, what's the most interesting thing you've seen today? <laughs> you know, I, I, I loved a good toll booth story. And it, it was amazing what you, could, what you could talk about. But that I pass, or even better yet, just driving through and then letting them capture a, uh, your license plate and sending you a bill. It's pretty nice. <laughs> that might be my favorite cashless society move. Yeah, can you imagine? Uh, I've always wondered about that job. Like, I'm sitting there sucking in carbon monoxide all day, collecting your tolls. I'm like, that cannot be a healthy job. So, yeah, I think that's probably recreated other jobs that are a little safer for workers out there. We, one of the ideas we were talking about is a lot of people have gone cashless already anyway, that they use credit cards and, and debit cards and pay a lot of their bills directly from their bank to their you know their utilities and such. And so I'm not sure really how many people are, you know, immediately affected by less and less use of cash, but cash um, is just a marker. And it's a scorecard of how to exchange goods and services. And so, 
Uh, for me, like when we've had an opportunity to travel internationally, which I don't like doing very often, but when I do, a credit card is just a lot better way for me because I get real anxious about doing the exchange rates and things of that nature. And so the credit card just, it does all that for me. It may cost me a little bit extra for that, but it's, it's worth the convenience for me. And I think we're, we were talking amongst ourselves where most of us uh, don't even send a check to pay our credit card bills, that it's an electronic transfer of money from our bank to the credit card. So there's, even with our credit card, there's no cash that actually changes hands. Keith, way back, uh, in, in, back in 1987, uh, when you started in the business, did you guys have a cage at, at Hilliard Lines? We did. We didn't actually have a cage. We, we had a, a wall, a uh, half wall around uh, the workers who received the checks and stock certificates and things of that nature. Yeah, I can remember in my earlier days, we they called it the cage and it, it was a place where clients would come in with checks and they would come in regularly. Um, maybe it's, it was a, a, a monthly deposit to get rid of some timing risk or uh, to, to invest over time. And, you know, I, I don't think Gimbal has a cage. <laughs> you, know who has, you know who has a cage? Fries. You ever been in Fries? Electronics? Yes. Yeah. They literally have a cage in there and somebody works in the cage. I'm like, man, that thing, that seems a little outdated there. But yeah. I assume yeah. that in the, with money, there literally was a cage to keep you out and keep the money in at one time. That's and right. So maybe it just goes with this whole trend that we've been seeing since those days of just like we were progressively moving towards a paperless society. Um, yeah. You know, like, but everything That's still exists as it was so even though we don't have the physical stock certificates we can still buy and purchase stocks we can still um, deposit checks even if they're electronically so maybe that just cash itself is an extension of that trend who knows yeah I think uh, you know I've, I've pondered some of the things I've watched and experienced through my career and um, you know, some of the anxiety that people have had during challenging times in the past, what they would have done is taken an old coffee can and put a lot of money in it, then buried a hole, buried it in a hole. And um, I know of one example where somebody buried $10,000 cash in a coffee can, uh, put it in their crawl space, and the corrosion got to it. And finally, they had to send particles to the Treasury Department to get that replaced. And so that's, that's an example of you know, cash, it, it, it makes you feel good because I'm afraid is why they would have it and bury it. It's just how we started. What are you afraid of? And then stock certificates, same way that when you had the physical certificates, I had um, uh, one, one example comes to mind where somebody had some dementia issues and they literally were hiding stock certificates around the house where the family just never did. They had to have them. There used to be like a 10 or 20 percent fee insurance policy had to, to pay for to replace stock certificates so that was really burdensome for people as well so it, it, it's definitely a change and most people don't like change i don't i don't like change um but but life is full of change and that's probably the only constant life is full of change <laughs> <laughs> other than at the retail except there's a shortage <laughs> <laughs> uh that's good <clears throat> Well, I, I've had a blast today. Anything else we need to cover before uh, we let everybody get back to their Friday? No, thanks for keeping in touch, everybody. And, you know, Keith's questions about, uh, you know, our surroundings in 2020. We really enjoy talking with you about that. It helps me shape my worldview. It creates some conversations uh, for my family and asking them what they think and so I just want to keep encouraging you to stay patient with people and uh, just just look for opportunities to uh, to show some kindness out there. The world desperately needs it right now, and right. Uh, you know some of you folks that are on this call, you're optimistic people. May, may, maybe not like uh, you may not even feel overly optimistic right now, and that's okay. But just uh, if you're on this call, you're thinking differently, and I want to encourage you to keep thinking and moving forward. Well, everybody have a great weekend.
Likewise. Thanks, yes. guys. See you soon. Bye. Bye.